Sorry. That's okay. Meeting's being recorded. That's fine. So comms, why are we here? So our main, the main game for Extinction Rebellion is to recruit. I don't know how many of you have been to introductory talk, but one of the central strategies behind Extinction Rebellion is to build a mass popular movement. Um, there's all sorts of studies that have been done of different movements in the world, like the civil disobedience movement, the suffragettes, all the, the civil rights, I should say, suffragettes, all these sorts of movements. If you get 3.5% of the population actively involved in some way, change happens. So one of our main aims is to build the movement, to get more people to join the rebellion, more people to come to actions, more people to be aware of what we're doing. And obviously the reason we're doing that is to make change happen. We want to move the dial. Now Extinction Rebellion has already started moving the dial, certainly in Europe, um, where they've been going for longer. Um, they've got things already happening like you know citizens assemblies. I'll get onto that in a minute. But we want to recruit lots of people to make a mass movement so we can actually shift the dial on climate change with the urgency that we need. Now, how do we do that? So there are some emotions are very powerful to get people engaged and active. The main ones are love and fear. Okay, love and fear are the deep motivators behind most of what people do. Then of course there's hunger, but it's hard to make people hungry um, with social media and stuff. So people, if you want people to move emotionally, you want to make them feel happy, included, inspired, informed, enabled, brave, angry, and lastly, afraid. So those are the big, these are the things that we want to get happening with our messaging and our media. We want those, we want to hit those emotions. Um, advertisers do it. This is how they flog cars and things, you know, so we do it too. Um, we don't want them to feel bored excluded, disempowered or depressed, right? So um, a lot of the time, some people, when they're doing their social media, they tend to put up a lot of negative like articles from the paper saying that, you know, the world's ending and we're all doomed. Don't do that, do the other thing. We'll talk about that later on. It's very important to keep your messages as positive as you can. We can do this, we must do this, we will do this. Join us, we have love, positive emotions, okay? The messaging, some ideas that you can put, the sort of messages we want to get across is look at these brave people, come to our event, join us next time. So this is a call to action. We always want to do whatever we're doing, we want to have a call to action, whether it's in just a social media post or an actual action that we're doing, you need to be asking people to do something. Um, what we don't want is to be getting into arguments, especially with our, ourselves, amongst ourselves. Um, certainly not on social media, getting into arguments, waste valuable time and energy. We don't have time for that. We need to stay positive, stay strong, keep calm and carry on. So that's the main building blocks behind all any kind of messaging strategy you're doing in your actions or your social medias and things like this, okay? Recruit, build, get people to join, stay focused, try not to depress people too much. So um, what are we doing with our strategy? So we exile is to be a mainstream movement. We want everyone to get involved. The idea is to engage ordinary people who may not have ever done anything before. We need to build on our present core. So we're talking obviously people who are already engaged, rebels, activists, they're obviously where we start. And then we want to build, build up from there. So we want to get the people who are afraid to join or people who've never done anything before, your grannies, your kids, your dentists, your lawyers, your butchers, your bakers. We want them to join our core and gradually to grow out from our core. So um, that's why XR works together in solidarity with other groups like Frontline Action on Coal, Stop Adani, any other kind of groups. We try to engage and include with them as much as we can and build out from there. Um, what we don't want is a fragmented movement of little bits, people doing everything all over the place. We want people to be able to work together. So we want to engage present and emerging rebels. We also want to get the rest of the mainstreams, your grannies and your butchers. We also want to talk to the change makers. So our main target audience after we recruited rebels is the change makers, the journalists, the influencers, existing groups, local leaders, corporations, your local MP, your councils, your unions, 
So if you can get into those groups and influence them, then you start making change happen. Um, the movers and the shakers, numbers matter, networks matter. So a lot of people, especially if you're in a country town, Bob, you'll probably know what this is like. If you can get those key central people with the big networks involved and talk to them, then you, you magnify your, um, your message. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Who are we not interested in talking to? We're not interested in talking to the naysayers, the dissenters, the splitters, the people who just don't get it, the climate deniers, just ignore them. Don't bother with them. We're not trying to talk to them. We want only need 3.5% of the population to be involved. 3.5% is not a lot. So don't try to be all things to all people. Okay, so don't get into arguments with um, climate deniers and don't bother with people who are just not interested, just ignore them. Focus on the three demands with your messaging. Okay. Um, so the three demands, I mean, most people know what they are, but just to go over it in case people don't know, demand number one, tell the truth. So that is a, a call to the media and government and corporations to tell the truth about climate change, to let people know how urgent it is, to stop playing it down, to stop lying, to stop pretending that it's not happening. So that message is, uh, people have been seeing actions like dumping cartloads of manure on the Murdoch media's uh, doorstep and things like this and uh, putting big banners outside government buildings and all these sorts of things tell the truth. Demand number two is act now, which means we have to act immediately. And the target for that, that people will want to talk to there is corporations and government. We want them to start changing what they're doing now. Uh, not just talk about that, but actually do it. And the third demand, there's sort of two things that are connected beyond politics and citizens assemblies. So that means we want citizens assemblies uh, which is like a jury, which is a group of people chosen at random from the public to oversee government action on climate. They basically take the decision out of the hands of the governments because they're hopelessly divided and they can't do anything. We want citizens assemblies. It might sound like a big ask, but citizens assemblies have actually been put in place in the UK, Canada and France already. And there's some loose talk about doing one in Melbourne and we're trying to get local councils to start thinking about doing this at local council level, even if it's just for a trial. So citizens assemblies might sound like a big thing, but it actually is an idea that's gathering momentum. Our key messages for recruitment are the wonderful hashtags, rebel for life, join the rebellion and climate emergency. Um, I, I'm assuming that everyone knows what a hashtag is. Is there anyone who doesn't know what a hashtag is or what it's for? No, good. So always try to use these sort of key hashtags if you can. Some people get a bit carried away. You know, and Wendy was wanting to clarify the hashtag. What's Is the hashtag? Right, Wendy? Yep. So if you use the hashtag, so the hash, you can see the hash symbol in the front there, and you put that on your social media post, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, when people click on that hashtag, it'll open up a whole lot of other things with the same hashtag. So if someone doesn't know what that means, they click on it and they'll see dozens of other things with the same message. So it's one so that people can understand in a short three words what you mean when you say tell the truth. The other one is you can actually see in them trending. So hashtags will trend. Um, so if everyone publishes tell the truth, there'll be you know three million posts with tell the truth. And it's like an indexing system for your posts. Um, so they're the existing ones that we tend to use the most. Um, there's other ones that other things you know, like Stop Adani always uses that and there's no new coal and there's things like that. But those, these, these are six of the main or seven are the main um, hashtags that we use in Extinction Rebellion. So whatever you're doing, hopefully your action or your post will be able to connect back in some way to one of these key demands or phrases. Okay, so if you're designing an action, think, okay, well, what does this reflect one of our demands? What are we doing here? You know, why are we here? It could be just to join the rebellion um, action to get people to join. Um, so yeah, simple, keep it simple. As I was saying before, don't try to be all things to everyone. Just keep it on message as much as you can, whatever you're doing. Um, so comms 101, our main job as comms people is obviously to publicize upcoming actions. Actions are the main way that we get our messages out there. People love actions. We always have an uptick in membership when we have an action. So you've got to get the word out about those. There's no point having an action if nobody comes. Um, spread the word, celebrate past actions. 
um, building and retaining membership, inspiring others to take action, getting that message out there, explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it. And lastly, to encourage discussion of issues. You know, it's not the main thing. The main game is not encourage discussion. That's kind of, that's why I put that one down the bottom. So the main highlight should always be on your actions. That's what gets the people out on the street because we want them out on the street. We want them away from their screens. We actually want them to get out in the street and to publicize past actions. Okay, pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how people get confused. Newsletters, I think this has disappeared off the corner of the uh, screen, but never mind. Um, we have an email list. Not everyone realizes we have an email list. We have a huge national database of email addresses and it's organized by postcode. So when people put their postcode in, they automatically get magically bumped into their local group. So every local group should have access to Action Network. And if you don't, talk to Serena and she can hook you up with the right person to get you access to Action Network, which is our database system. A weekly email or fortnightly or even monthly, depends how active your group is or how big your group is or what you're doing is a very good way. Not everyone is on Facebook. Only about a third of people are on Facebook. And out of those third, not everyone looks at it all that often. So you can't just rely on Facebook to do your work for you. A weekly or fortnightly newsletter is a great thing. Again, it's all about actions. So publicizing your upcoming actions and reporting on past actions. Keep it short, don't bang on. Put some nice pictures, keep it short, keep it relevant to your local group. So a newsletter, an email newsletter is a very powerful tool you can use um, to supplement your social media. Um, yeah, and some people are keeping their own email lists on spreadsheets and things. There's no need for that. It's all in Action Network. And if you don't know how to use that, um, yeah, Serena can help you get in touch. But then we get to social media. So social media is um, one of our best tools we've got to get in, you know, to, to get out there because uh, relying on the mainstream media is very uh, touch and go because they often very reluctant to share our stories and we don't control the message, they control the message. So fantastic to have your Facebook page for your local group. Ideally you have two or three people doing it rather than just one because it's a big job and people get burnt out. So if you can have two or three helpers, um, at least to help with your Facebook page, that's ideal. Have more than one admin. If you have only one admin on your page and they quit or get into a fight or something and leave, then you're really stuck. So always have two admins, at least two. It's a good idea to set up a team messaging system. So use Facebook Messenger, because it makes sense because you're in Facebook anyway, or a WhatsApp group or something. So you can discuss what you're doing on your page. Um, it's better than using emails. Keep your Facebook page interesting and relevant to your group. A lot of people um, just get newspaper articles and push, put them up, you know, like the Arctic is melting or, um, you know, the birds are dying or something. And as I was saying earlier, keep it positive. Don't, don't depress people. Um, highlight actions. If you're not doing any actions, share out somebody else's action because people love actions. They always get the most views. Um, you must space your posts out two to four hours, right? Don't put three up at once and then nothing for the next two days, spread them out. Um, you can use scheduling in Facebook. If people don't know how to use scheduling, you can set it up and you can just look up the help on how to do this, but you can, what I often do is I'll bang up three or four posts spaced out over a couple of days, then I can just relax and don't have to go back and look at it. Um, there's usually peak hours and dull periods in your Facebook. So, well, I don't know what it's like now with COVID, but it used to be the peak used to be about six o'clock in the evening when people are coming home from work, you know, all those people staring at their phones on the tram. So the peak period is usually about five or six o'clock in the evening and first thing in the morning. So people will often look on their Facebook first thing in the morning when they're commuting to and from work. And sometimes eight o'clock at night, like after dinner, people will have another look at it. The flat spots are usually during the middle of the day. It's probably a bit different now with COVID, but if you've got a big important story coming up and you want lots of people to see it, put it in the peak time, which is usually the afternoon, not the middle of the night. Um, if you've got an article that's a long read, like sometimes there's a long read, 
um, those are good on the weekends or at night. Because people in the, during the daytime, they'll just flick straight past it. They won't read it. Sometimes there's a really interesting article you want people to see. Put those on on the weekend or in the evening. Um, make sure you've got some light and shade. Uh, so there has to be some fun, some joy, some happiness. If you could get some humour in there, don't make it all doom and gloom. If there is a bad news story, you know, the Arctic's melting or whatever it is, make sure you accompany that with a call to join the rebellion. Um, I'm afraid it's sort of disappearing off the edge of the stage, the page there, but HTTPS Earth. I think everyone can see that link there. That's the link. If people join that, click that link and put in their postcode, they'll go into Action Network. So you want to pop in a call to join the rebellion every once in a while, every few days or so with your post. Even if it's a terrible news story, like, you know, something dreadful's happened, what are you going to do about it? Join the rebellion. So a call to action. It's always good to have a call to action. Um, photographs that you post up yourself and videos that you make yourself will get a lot more likes than news articles. Facebook algorithms work that they want people to post their own original material. So original photos, original videos, rather than just links to other stories. So if you have a, an event coming up, post a photograph and the link to the event. It'll get a lot more um, clicks. It's just how Facebook works. Um, and yeah, try to keep a sense of humor. People love that. Funny things will get a lot more attention than sad or gloomy things. Um, okay. So basic steps 101. I look, a lot of people know how to do all these things. Um, in Facebook, there is a lot of helps you can look up about curating your Facebook page and how to use Creator Studio. I'm not going to get into all the technicalities of doing all that stuff. But these are the basics um, of running a Facebook page for your local group. And obviously local group, local stories, local people. They love to see their pictures on the Facebooks. They always get lots of links, lots of likes. Um, Moderating your Facebook page. So a lot of people um, sometimes a bit unsure about moderation and how to go about it. You have to have a moderator. You've got to have moderation on your page. You can't just post things up and then set it and forget it because you'll get overrun with trolls and people will start fighting and swearing and carrying on because that's what people do. So it's your job as a moderator to create a safe and pleasant environment for your users not a place where people come to argue and shout at each other. In an ideal world, you have two moderators, one for day, one for night. Yeah, because one person can't do it all, you'll wear yourself out. Have a, have a team of at least two, if you can get someone to help you. Um, after you've done a post, just every morning, just pop in or every evening, depending if you're the day or the night person, keep an eye on the comments. If anyone's swearing, abusive, trolling, ban them delete them and ban them. I take a very strong view about this. A lot of people go, oh, you shouldn't ban them, you know, but you should allow people to have a, a variety of views. I disagree with that. I think ban them. It's your page, you ban them. Um, if people are making comments that are sort of, they're not really that bad that you want to delete them, but they're just not helpful or they're just a bit, you know, off, you can hide the comment. So the person who put the comment can still see it and their friends can see it, but the whole world can't see it. That way they don't know they've been hidden, so they don't get all upset, but it just pushes it down out of view. Um, otherwise, just ignore them. If people make a positive comment, like, good on you, way, hurrah, you know, like that, love that, because that'll push them to the top. The more you interact with your members on your page, the more you'll get um, your numbers up, your views up and people like it when they get a little positive reinforcement for their comment. Um, so like the positive comments, ignore or hide the negative ones. Don't feel compelled to reply to everyone's comments um, very judiciously, just because you're the moderator, you have to maintain a sort of a, an authoritative uh, position. So if you're going to reply to a comment, make sure it's positive and warm, like thank you, or nice to hear from you, or something positive and warm. 
do not under any circumstances get into arguments with your members. We had um, on the Victorian Facebook page, we had a bit of a situation where one of the moderators kept losing his temper and getting into arguments with the users. Oh, we, had to, uh, we had to take him off that job after a while. Never lose your temper. If you're starting to feel a bit aggro or something, just put the computer away and just walk away. Step away from the machine, calm down, don't worry about it. Um, it's easy to do when you, get, you can get rolled up, but uh, don't get rolled up, whatever you do. Um, on your Facebook page, whoever's liked your post, there's a thing you can click the likes and you can see all the people who've liked it. And if they're not a member, invite them to join. This is a little job I do every night before I go to bed. It's sort of soothing. I just go through the posts, invite all the likers. That will push your membership up remarkably. And it will also, um, you know, the more membership you have, the more likes, the more activity, the more things going on your page, the more your algorithms will do their magic job for you. Um, the notifications button is your friend. If you're managing a Facebook page, there's a thing at the top that says notifications, and it'll bring up a list of everything that's happened on the page today. If you see a post that's got 200 comments, you think, oh, hello, that's possibly a red flag. There might be some trolling going on. Check that one first. And any trolls, ban them. And if there's lots of likes, invite them. So the notifications button is a very quick way. If you've got a very busy page, you can quickly see what's the most active thing going on on your page. But most small groups won't have, you know, massive, like it's not like the National, the National Australia page is huge and very active, but most of your little local group pages will be fairly easy to, um, to keep track of. But yeah, make sure you watch those comments because there are people out there who spend all day just trolling groups like ours just for fun. And it turns people off if they're swearing and stuff on their page. You don't want that. Um, maintain your authority. Every now and again, when there's a lot of trolling going on, I'll pop up a post like this. Um, people are reminded that XR principles include respectful, nonviolent communications. We appreciate thoughtful discussion of important issues, but trolling and abusive language are not tolerated. So when you pop up a post like that, all the trolls will jump on it and go, you can't tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. Don't you? So that's fantastic. It's like flypaper. So you get them and you just ban them. It's a, it's a great trick. It works every time. Um, and most, most of your other users will really appreciate that because they, they had it when there's trolls. You'd be surprised the number of people who spend a lot of time arguing with trolls when it's, it's really a yeah, terrible waste of time and energy and burns people out. So yeah, th that text is on our web page. It's on our Facebook page. It's very handy text. Put it in your about thing on your Facebook page if you're managing one and refer people to that if they play up. Uh, and people say, oh, it's not a democracy. I say, this is not a democracy. This is a rebellion. Sorry about that, folks. My page, my rules. So, you know. Um, okay. So getting the most out of an action on your social media. So you want to be clear and you want to be concise, okay? You don't want your text to be three, four paragraphs long. You want to be able to say it in 50 words or less, like a short paragraph, what is your event about? Ideally, you work this stuff out at the first action meeting. You think, okay, what will we do? Let's all put our shoes in front of the town hall or something. Okay, yeah, we can do that. What are we, what's, the, what's it about? What are we trying to say? What are the words? What are we trying to, what's the message? So do that at the start if you can. Um, and as I said earlier, actions should refer to at least one of the demands and your message should be clear. There's no point doing an action if no one knows what, what you're on about. Short sentences, and you can use those words in your social media, in your press release, in your banners, in your flyers, in whatever else you're doing. Very important to get those. A lot of people do that as an afterthought. Do it at the start. When you've got an action, ideally, in an ideal world, you'll have a media team of, of between say two and four people on an action. Sometimes in a small group, especially <coughs> saying to Serena, it's quite often just me running around with my phone, but ideally you've got a helper, at least one helper. You want one person doing videos or a live feed. You want one person um, taking photos. Um, if it's a big action, you want one person possibly just being the front person so that they're the speaker that you're mostly filming. 
and they might also be the person taking um, interviews if you get any media there you never know your luck and if it's a very big action um, you also want someone on the phone wrangling wrangling journalists I've had situations where I've been doing a live feed on my phone and a journalist is ringing me repeatedly trying to get through <laughs> you don't want that um, so yeah, you want someone on the phone wrangling in an even more ideal world you've got someone being the eye in the sky so what we mean by the eye in the sky is you've got someone at home who's not at the action and they've got their laptop, they've got their phone, they've got everything and they're watching what's going on. They've got the phone to wrangle journalists. You can just flip them through a photograph and they'll put it up on Facebook for you. So they're doing all and they're watching, they're moderating the comments and they're doing all those things for you, which you can't be doing while you're running around juggling phones and dodging the police. So in an ideal world, you have an eye in the sky and you tell them that you're going to get an action today at one o'clock. Can you be my eye in the sky? And I go, okay, yep. Yeah. And they're there standing by ready to help out any way they can. Um, yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, the media team should be at the action briefing. As I said earlier, get this stuff sorted out earlier. At the action briefing before you have your action like you normally you'd have a briefing of all your activists before you start make sure there's nobody who does not want to be in any photos um or videos say is there anyone who does not want to be filmed stay behind me keep yourself out of the shot because you can't be constantly juggling around worrying about people who don't want to be photographed um at the beginning of the action yeah if there's anyone who doesn't want to be filmed tell them to stay behind you um, always do a Facebook Live of your action if you can. Um, I'll do some more details about Facebook Lives. Facebook Lives get a lot of looks. People love Facebook Lives. Um, they get a lot of views. They pop up on the screen when they start happening so people notice them. Um, Facebook loves Facebook Lives. They push them up in their algorithms. They want more because it's a bit of a Facebook only thing that you can do on fa only Facebook. Um, you can take a short video and post it up later but it takes a long time and it takes a lot of bandwidth. Doing it live as you're going is a great way to get a record of your action. Sometimes it's the only permanent record of your action. Um, take heaps of photos. Um, take 50 photos. You might get one good one. You might get a couple of good ones, but just take lots of photos. Don't be afraid to take photos. I'll be talking in a minute about um, how to take a good photo. Um, photographs can be posted after your action, like the following day into an album on Facebook. People love to, when they go home, they like to see themselves. They get very excited when they see their photo. Oh, there's me. So take plenty of photos. Um, yeah, Facebook, alg Facebook algorithms, as I was saying before, work really well with photographs and videos. Um, after you've done your action and you've got your video and you've got your photos, share it out. So if you've got a group and a page, share it to your group, share it to the Vic discussion group, share it to the state group share it to your friends get your other users to share it to your friends the more it gets shared out by more people again it pushes it up it pushes up the views so um, and you can use hashtags um, to tag other groups so for example if it's a coal action you could tag no new coal and the coal people might pick it up um, if you're on twitter i haven't talked much about twitter but twitter is um, a terrific um medium for getting onto journalists and politicians. Journalists and politicians use Twitter much more than they use Facebook. So if you can tag, you know, your environment minister or your premier or whatever in your, especially in Twitter, but it can also works in Facebook, tag the decision makers that you want to talk to. Um, it might get more views from them. Um, yeah, so do you live video while you're actually doing your action Later on that night or the following day, put up some photos. The day after that, share it out to different groups and get it out there to as many groups as you can. Some of this, as I say, is pretty obvious to most people, but not everyone knows this stuff. Um, yeah, writing posts. Be clear, be concise, short paragraphs, double check your facts, um, spell check, always good. Um, try to be positive rather than negative when you make a post. So don't say don't, say do in your language. Always be positive. 
pick one really good photograph to illustrate your post, like the best photo. Um, don't waffle, don't try to cram too much stuff into one post. A lot of people try to cram everything into the one post, just keep it simple. Don't defame anyone, please. Um, and yeah, don't be offensive or rude. There's no need. Keep it positive, keep it friendly, keep it happy. Um, keep it short. I've seen some people write posts that are um, 10 paragraphs long. No one's going to read that. So you're wasting your time. Just don't. Just don't. Photographs. Okay. We're going to have a bit of audience participation in this bit. So I hope you're not all, you know. You can turn your sound back on if you've got something to say. So photographs, clarity, obviously, right? Make it clear. Clean your lens, people. Uh, I've seen a lot of photographs spoiled um, with dirty lens because, you know, people are always touching and fiddling with their phone in their pocket. So give it a clean, even if it's just on your shirt. Okay? Hold it steady. Don't be like click, 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 waving your camera around and, and running around. Stand still. Breathe in. Keep your elbows in, take your time, take a clear photo. It's pretty basic, but there you go. A good photograph is telling the story, the story, right? You don't want a picture of a lot of people just standing around, could be anywhere. We want to know where it is. We want to know what you're doing. We want to know what you want. So a good photograph is telling a, a story of the action. And I'll show you some examples in a minute of what I mean. Get close-ups of people. Get the emotions on the faces. So photographs of people standing in the distance, very boring. Mm -mm. Get up close. Don't be afraid to get up close. Um, you don't have to stick the camera right in their face. You can crop it later, but um, try to get those um, emotions. Those are the photographs that do the best. Um, lighting is very important. Can you get? Can you move around to the side? Can you get a better angle? Can you ask them to stand near the window? Um, don't be afraid to say, hey, come over with me near the window. The light's better. Don't, don't be afraid to do that. Get a good photo if you can. Um, if it's an overcast day or it's just dark and the lighting is very dull and gloomy, enhance your photos later. There's all sorts of editing tools. Just lighten them up. Enhance the contrast. Have a look at them when you get home. Crop them out. Enhance them. Lighten them. Um, rather than post up a lot of really dull photographs. If it's an overcast day, your photos will look Will, won't look as good if it's a lovely sunny day. Um, get the drama, get the action. Sometimes it's good to get up high so you can see the size of the crowd. I've seen a lot of photographs of the backs of people's heads, but if you can even just get your camera and hold it up in the air, you can actually sometimes get a really good shot or climb up on something, but be careful. But actually climb up on things, sometimes that works. Uh, framing, watch your background. Um, you don't want bins and things in the background if you can avoid it. Um, try to get an interesting background. Again, you can say to people, hey, can you stand in there, over there in front of that thing and that'll look better. Um, don't be afraid to give people a bit of direction. Can the tall people move to the back so we can see everyone, please? Can you scrunch together a bit more? Don't all just stand in a line, you know, get someone to bob down in the front, hold the sign in the front, straighten out that banner, I can't read it. Everyone, look over here. And another good one I always use is say, climate emergency. I don't know what, it makes everyone smile. It's that E sound. Everyone say, climate emergency, and click. And make sure you take a couple of pictures um, because people got their eyes closed and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so audience participation. What's good about this picture? Is it a good picture? Um, it's got a, a good high view. What's happening? Yeah, that's taken by a professional photographer. He uses a selfie stick. A lot of drama, a lot of action, a lot of police. It's not exactly clear that it's Extinction Rebellion or anything, but it's a very dramatic photo. Got in the paper, that photo. It shows how many police are needed to arrest one person. Yeah. Indeed. That's uh, Rebel Andy going limp. Good on you, Andy. Um, okay, why is this terrible? Can't see a lot of people's faces. So, can't see their emotions or whatever you're looking for. 
people texting in the background. Not interesting. A lot of action. A lot of sitting around. <laughs> Blake's got a sign in front of his face. Even if I, I even tried cropping, this is one of my pictures, it's obviously it's one of my rejects. I even tried cropping this lady out and there's just this sort of stuff going on in the background. It's just, it's just terrible. You can't tell where it is. You don't know what they're doing. The lighting's boring. The background's boring. Yeah. But the number of photographs I see like this, I mean, it's just terrible, right? So I just, just uh, ditch this one. A lot of background too. Yeah. There's not even a good bit you can crop out of it because it's, it's just awful. But uh, that's all right. These things happen. This picture went crazy on social media. I just took this with my phone. It went nuts. Any ideas why? Old ladies being rebels. The expression. The face. Yeah. The little bit of humour with the science. The homemade stop at Arnie's sign. Yeah. You can tell where it is. You can see what they're doing. And it's just, there's something just funny and quirky and homemade about it. Right? You don't have to be a professional photographer to get a really good shot. Um, yeah, this was us uh, turning up at Josh Frydenberg's and uh, not being admitted. We did ring the doorbell. <laughs> so yeah, for some reason that picture just went crazy on social media. I don't know. It's just one of those things, you know. Uh, yeah, here's another one of my... Uh, Terrible attempts. What's terrible about this photo? Can't read the sign at the top. Half the people in the picture are looking away from the camera. <laughs> yep. The background's terrible. No one's looking at the camera. Can't read the signs. You don't know where it is, where it is or what it is. Yeah. Don't do that. There was a really terrific, this, what they actually were doing here, they went to the, um, oh, some co conference center in Melbourne where Josh Frydenberg was making an appearance and they were bird dogging him, chasing him around. There's a terrific photograph of um, Rebel Audrey chasing after him with a sign and he's sort of running away from her. That's a terrific photo that was on the same day. But uh, yeah, no, this is, um, yeah, don't make a picture like that. That's terrible. There's a good picture. Um, this one, the, and this is another one by Julian Mayne, he's a professional photographer. He actually climbed up on the top of one of those tram things in Melbourne so he could get the crowd. It's a good composition. You've got this nice, strong image in the front. You can see how many people are involved. Like there's a huge number of people, obviously. You can read the signs. It's bright. It's happy. Yeah. There's also the dinosaur. Yeah, this little dinosaur thing in the front here. Everyone's yelling. It's it's got a lot of action. It's exciting. They're not just all standing around looking glum, you know. There's a little bit of humour too. Something like if you don't act like adults, we will. I think that's brilliant messaging. Yeah. Yeah, the kids put some great signs together. But yeah, sometimes, like I say, getting up, getting up, climbing up on something, but be careful. Um, but you can really see the size of the crowd if you've got a big crowd. Yeah, this is another one of mine. <laughs> eh, I mean, it's okay. You can see where it is. You can read the signs. But, you know, eh, it's, you know, it's just like not that drama. interesting. Huh? Like drama. Yeah. This looks like nobody cares about the what's going on. Like there's mm. people walking around behind, like living their normal life. And there doesn't seem to be, it's like the sending a message that our actions don't really like work, which is bad. Yeah. It lacks drama, doesn't it? 
Um, this is actually outside. The, this, we did this at lunchtime so that the staff could see us going in and out. These are just the staff going in and out. But um, yeah, it's boring. But this one, much better. You can read the signs. You can see where it is. It looks heroic, looks dramatic. Again, by Julian Main, a professional photographer. He does a lot of our stuff. That one got in the paper. That's a good photo. It's a ripper. Okay. This is um, an action that happened just on um, Wednesday or Tuesday. It's a bit of, it's a bit of an arty, it's a bit arty. You have to look at it. I actually just took this as a still off the video because we didn't have any photos. So I just paused the video and did a screen capture of the a still from the video. You can see there's someone taking a picture here. You can see the eyes. You can see the cops in the background and there was someone touching her hand from the outside of the window. They actually used this in the, some of the newspapers. I just chucked it in the press release because I didn't have a photo. I just did a, a still from the video. It's a bit messy, but it sort of works. Difficult when you've got the, the window and the reflection. But uh, the cop in the background is, uh, cops always make good uh, props in your photos. See if you can get one of them in. Those look good in the photos. And this is a nice one, another one by Julian. The moment when the cops came and stood on the road with us and stopped the cars. <laughs> <laughs> Again, good colors, bright. There's a little Marco there. You can read the signs. You can see what's happening. You can see we're stopping the traffic. So that's that's quite a good good shot. Okay. Tells the story of what's going on. Um, so this is just a quick um, quick example. So I took this one last night. This is uh, Edie waving a flag around in Sturt Street. So I took a couple of photos of this now. First of all, I said, Edie, put the flag down a bit. Can you hold your flag a bit lower? So she said, oh, yeah, okay. So she held her flag down. But she's not. I said, Edie, look at the camera, darling. Look over here. Hoo -hoo. She said, oh, okay. So she looked at me. All right. So that's getting there. Okay, so that's taking the actual photograph. So then when I got home, I enhanced it. Obviously, crop out the stuff out of the background you don't need. It's an overcast rainy day in Ballarat. So I light, oh, hang on. So, oops, even more cropping and I lightened and brightened the color and the contrast. So now you can still see the sign, you can still see the logo, but you can see the, the cheeky expression. So it makes a much better photo. See, I mean, that one's okay but better, yeah? So you can do a lot of stuff with your photos when you get home. Don't be afraid to crop them, change them, tidy them up, brighten them up. Do all that. One of the things I really like about this, that conversation is that you can do so much with just one person. Because here we are in COVID and we're really constrained, particularly in Melbourne, but that we could actually be doing a lot more. So, you know, sometimes I think some of the photos we could be doing in our own houses if we could figure out how to be a bit more skillful with cameras and backgrounds and banners and stuff. Yeah, take a, take a pal and go and stand on the side of the road. I mean, it's not illegal to stand on the side of the road with a sign, as long as you're within five kilometres of your house in Melbourne and you're wearing a mask. Um, yeah, yeah, simple, simple. Um, okay, I'm gonna quickly whiz through it's Facebook Live. <laughs> Charge your phone the night before. If you're doing the number of people I've got, the, the phone's gone flat. They haven't, you know. Um, your phone phone will last about an hour if you're doing a Facebook Live, uh, if it's fully charged, and it is guaranteed the battery will die right at the most exciting moment. Guaranteed. So invest in a battery pack and plug it in before you start. 
um, prepare what you're going to say before you start, like do it the day before even, or do it when you're on the way to the gig, type your text in first, because it always takes longer than you think. And you end up with these Facebook lives and it says in Sydney, you're like, what? You can fix it later when you get home, but it's a good idea to have the text already on your phone, ready to go, because it takes longer than you think. Hold your phone sideways, people, like this, not like this. Um, work out if you've got a portrait lock on. Never do a Facebook Live with your camera up this way, because it's like trying to, it's like trying to peek through a keyhole. You can't see what's going on. If you have it, you can get all the action. It looks much better on a laptop, looks fine on a phone. This business, you end up waving the phone around trying to get people to be able to see what's happening. Just don't do it. Ugh, drives me crazy. Um, get the whole action from start to end if you can. If your action goes for half an hour, film for a whole, whole half hour. Don't be stopping and starting. It's just annoying. Just keep filming. Um, comment, commentate a little bit. Um, a good live video has a bit of commentary. We're here in Melbourne today selling the government to tell the truth and we're going to block Burke Street. Don't over commentate. I was watching one yesterday and this guy was just going on and on and on. I got sick of the sound of his voice after a while, just occasionally to say, what are we doing here? Why are we here? But people just joining us, we're here. Um, if people are commenting, you can see the comments rolling by on your phone. Like you can say, g'day Canada or something. Don't get into an argument with the, comment, with the comments. But just say, hi Canada or whatever, if someone's texting you or messaging you. Um, so commentary, yeah, not too much, not too little. Don't overdo it. Do have some commentary though, because I've seen a lot of lives where there's, there's no talking at all. And it's just weird. Um, if you have a helper to take photographs that it's great. They can take photographs for you. They can take a short video, less than two minutes for later or for um, Twitter. Um, they can also do like an interview. So they can go up to one of your activists and say, tell us why you're here today. And they'll go blah, 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 quick little two minute interview. Those are great to put up later. And the media sometimes use them, you never know. Um, move around slowly. Don't wave your camera around. It makes people seasick. I've seen people doing it. And everyone at home is starting to feel queasy. Keep it still, keep your elbows in so your hands don't shake. Uh, just walk slowly around. Um, don't be afraid to get up the front. So if there are speeches going on, just get up the front, just get, just get in the front there. Don't be standing up the back so nobody can see what's going on. You've got a front row seat to history. People get up there in the front and get the action. Um, when something's not much going on, you can just grab someone and say, so what brings you here today? And if the Prime Minister was watching this, what would you tell him? Or, well, what does your sign say? Anything like that, doesn't really matter. If someone you go up to and start talking to doesn't want to talk, just go to the person next to them because they're probably busting to say something. You get these awkward moments where people go, uh, and they don't know what to say. That, what would you tell the PM if he was watching this? That's a good one. That usually gets people going. Um, make sure you're, the person you're talking to is audible, especially with masks, it's a bit tricky. Um, the microphone on your camera is at the bottom. So you may need to just tilt the bottom of the camera a bit more towards them, especially if they're wearing a mask. Um, don't put your finger over the microphone. <laughs> it's been done, don't do it. I've seen people doing this and you can't hear what's going on. You gotta hold it like that. Um, if someone's squinting into the sun, just gradually walk around and they'll follow you, they will. It's terrible watching someone going like this in the video. It's just off putting. Um, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just laugh. You know, I've, I've bumped into poles. I've dropped the camera. I've, you know, mixed up words. Don't worry about it. Just press on. It's all part of the fun. Um, if you have never done a Facebook live before, have it practice at home. Like do a Facebook live to your own page of, of someone cooking dinner or something. Say, well, we're here today cooking dinner and it uh, seems like, what have we got for dinner today? La, 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 la. Just do a practice. Do a couple of practices until you feel comfortable. Um, so yeah, Facebook live tips and tricks. I've got a, a sheet with all this stuff written down if anyone's particularly interested in that. Never do this. This is the worst. 
That's what happens when you've got your phone on portrait lock, but you're holding it sideways. I've seen so many videos ruined like that. Check your portrait lock. There's, depending on your phone, there'll be help instructions on how to fix your portrait lock. Turn off. So if you tilt your phone towards you, it'll, it should go up and down. Some people are locked. Never do that. Um, when you get home afterwards, you can have a look at your video. You can choose a thumbnail. Some video will automatically sort of pick the bit in the middle of the video. It might be a picture of a piece of concrete or could be anything. You can edit the thumbnail so you get a, a nice image. This is an example of tagging. So tagging um, a group. So I'm tagged Jabberon. So that'll pop up and they'll see it. And a short, very short explanation of what it's about and find out more here. So don't write war and peace in the comment, just keep it really short. Um, yeah, tagging. Uh, this is a liking the likes and the shares. So when you get home, check the likes, invite them to your page, like the comments, ask people to share it. Pretty basic stuff, but it all helps. Publicising an action or event, <clears throat> make sure you give at least a week or two in advance, unless it's a secret, secret squirrel one. Is it worth a media release? Not everything's worth a media release. Your action might be just a little thing that's no point in calling the media. If it's worth a media release, you want to get that out a couple of days before. I'll talk about that in a minute. Always make sure you co-host a Facebook event to Extinction Rebellion Australia. Because if you co-host it to Extinction Rebellion Australia, it will go on the website and it will reach a much wider audience. And there's a website with all the events and it'll automatically bounce from Extinction Rebellion Australia to the website. Also share it with your state group, <clears throat> co-host with your state group and Extinction Rebellion Grey Power has about 30,000 members. So co-host your event. If you're not sure how to do that, you can look up the help. It's pretty easy. We just add them in as co-hosts to any event you do. Put the location at the front of the name of the event, especially if it's going on the national page. You know, Lismore, traffic action, Hobart, whatever. So put the name, the location at the front of the event name. Otherwise, you get millions of events on the web page and nobody knows where they are. You know, it just says bike swarm. You're like, okay. So say where it is. Um, create an event on Action Network, the database. You can use it in your newsletter and people who click an RSVP get added to the database. Don't just rely on Facebook. Use Action Network. Um, repost it a few times leading up to your event. So put it up, then put it up again and put it up the day before. Don't be afraid to put it up a few times to remind people. And use a photo rather than just a link. It gets more views. Okay. I'm racing through a bit, but a lot of this stuff's pretty basic. Um, okay, conventional media old school media, media releases. Okay, so is it newsworthy? As I was saying before, don't just send out a, a media release every time you have a bike swarm of five people, they're not interested, right? Unless you have a friendly journalist that you know in your local paper, you might think it's worth asking them if they're interested, but really don't just shoot out press releases all over the place because people will stop opening them. Um, if it's newsworthy, do a press release at least 24 hours in advance. Uh, if you're doing a secret squirrel action and you don't want to tip off the cops, you can make it subject to embargo. You put it at the top embargo. That means the media is not allowed to publish it until the day. Media. Some people are worried that the media will tip off the cops. They won't. They're not interested in doing that. There's not in their interests for the police to be there before you are and stop the action from happening because they don't get a story yet. So if you're doing a secret sneaky one, like the naked people in Sydney the other day, it was a secret one because obviously I didn't want to tip them off that they were doing that. But they only put the press release out about three hours before the event because they were worried about tipping off the cops or they hadn't thought of it or something. We would have got a lot more coverage if they had a 24 hours in advance. TV crews are not sitting there waiting for your press release to come in so they can rush down to your action. They usually plan this like the night before at least. So make sure you give them 24 hours at least notice, sometimes more, especially if it's a big event. Um, your press release should never be more than one page. Try to think of a catchy headline if you can, something to grab attention. <clears throat> um, obviously the basic information, what, where, when, and why, just a paragraph or so. A couple of quotes, you know, so-and-so said, 
the Extinction Rebellion is here to stop climate change or whatever it is, but making sure it's something interesting that might actually get printed. Uh, you have to have a contact detail for the journalist to phone if they want to talk to someone. So if you've got your eye in the sky, that's great for them to call them or you've got your media juggling person. Hopefully it's not only you and you're trying to take a life while the phone's ringing, as I was saying before. Um, we have an XR national media list for big stories. So we have a national media list with about 1,200, has got everyone, you know. Um, so if it's a big story, send it to XRVIC Media or get in touch with them or with me even and ask for help. Um, <clears throat> after, the <clears throat> after the action, you can send out another release, which will include photos or links to a drive where the photos are stored, a report on what actually happened and maybe some background issue, background information on your issue. For example, we did one about gas and I put some background stuff with links so the journalists can check it. You do their research for them, they'll be much more likely to do your story. Journalists don't always know everything and they're often very busy. So if you can add more detail in your background with some links to some credible sources, please people, credible sources, um, that will often help the journalist to understand your issue because journalists don't necessarily understand the issue as well as you do. So help them. Um, you can chase up your press release. <clears throat> you can text if you've got, if you're starting to collect journalists' um, phone numbers and emails on your phone, that's great. If you live in a small town, hopefully you know a couple of your journos or find out. You can message them on Twitter. You can call the Talkback Radio. We've done this, we have quite a bit of success just calling Talkback and getting on. If a TV crew is coming, work out who's going to do the talking. Smarten yourself up, people. You know, badge, T-shirt, some branding, um, you know, pretty basic. Um, think about what you're going to say beforehand. Even maybe make a couple of mental notes to yourself because it's easy. They will want to sidetrack you. You want to know what you want to say. Even practice with one of your pals. Get them to throw some curly questions at you and uh, have a little practice. It's always a good idea. Be clear. <coughs> Speak in short sentences and pause frequently, right? Because if you're speaking for five minutes, there's a good chance they're just going to take a 10 second bite out of that. And the more you just pause and breathe in between saying things, it allows the editor to cut at the right spot. Don't just babble. It's tempting to do that. But if you just babble without taking a breath, they probably won't be able to use it. Okay, short sentences. Take a breath every now and again. It helps the editors later when they're trying to put their story together. As I say, you'll, they'll usually edit you. If you have a USB stick or a link or something ready to, to give them photos, it all helps. These days it's all about email, so get their contact details. So you can flick them through some photos and stuff later. Um, radio station, oh no, now what'll we do? It's pretty much the same with radio, except with radio, you'll definitely be going out live. Again, don't babble, take a breath now and again, you know, short sentences, take a breath, let them ask you another question. Answer that question, don't babble, speak slowly. Um, it'll all be over much faster than you think. Uh, it's not a bad idea, especially if you're doing radio, you can have some dot points in front of you. So if you've got some statistics or something that you wanna remember that you don't wanna mess up the numbers, just have them written down. Um, just key facts, don't you know, keep it interesting. Um, be very careful about talking to right wing media. Um, if you're not confident, don't do it. Just say no, because they will. I've seen, I've, I've heard some train wreck interviews with the right wing guys because they're experts at either getting you angry or making you sound stupid or something. Never lose your call, cool. stay on the message. If they ask you, what do you think you're doing blocking the roads? You can go, the climate change emergency is really serious. So you don't have to answer that question. Just say what you want to say. Um, consider who's the audience. So if you're dealing with a hostile right-wing interviewer, all the more reason to not go overboard um, with the climate stuff, just try to keep it um, clear. Like, you know, we, we gas, is, gas is just as bad as coal, keep it simple. Um, don't blind everyone with too much science. 
uh, if you're talking to a friendly journalist, that's great. They'll usually be great. They'll ask you really good questions and it's much easier and you can just relax. But yeah, don't be afraid to say no if it's a right wing outlet, if you're not confident. I like, to, I like talking to the right wing ones. I have fun with them, but um, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, I don't know if everyone's seen this uh, little interview I did. I'll see if I can, it's only short. I know we're gonna run out of time in a minute, but um, I'll just try to run it. Hang on, sorry guys. I think it's worth a, uh, Oh, worth a look. All right. I had it all set up and now I've lost it. Ugh. No, I'll try it this way, see if it works. Hopefully it will. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. So this is an example of talking to someone who's trying to get you to say what they want, but you're having none of it. Yeah, well, I don't know why it's taking so long, sorry. And this was done live, like live to air. <laughs> so it was a bit scary. Hopefully it'll come up in a minute. You also notice I've got my hands tight. I've got my hands behind my back the whole time. Because I have this tendency to do this. Oh, it's not going to play. Maybe if you post it into the chat, we can all watch it. Also. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll put a link and you can, you can look at it later. Um, it's good fun, but um, yeah, it's a good example of um, uh, doing an interview with a journalist who's um, being a bit hostile. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry about that. I'll put that in the chat. Um, also, yes, as I was saying, you notice I've got my hands behind my back because I have a terrible tendency to do this when I'm doing an interview, flap my hands around. Um, and you don't want to do that. It's very distracting. Um, sorry, back to the slideshow. Uh, so yeah, be polite. Speak slowly and clearly. Take a breath every now and again. Um, have a think about what you're going to say. Be positive, be friendly, be polite and get that message. No matter what they say, you, just, you say what you want to do. You've seen politicians do it when they get asked a question, they answer something completely different as if the person never asked that question. Do it, why not? Um, if you can build relationships with journalists, that's really good. Having a pet friendly journalist is a, is, is a ripper. Have their number on your phone. Don't bother them constantly, but if something's coming, you give them a little heads up. Hey, I've got, I think I've got a good story for you here. We have a good journo in um, Ballarat who I come up with an idea for a story. I go, how about this for a story? He goes, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's do that. I'll send a photographer down. Um, you might not be so lucky with your with the big papers, but if you know a couple of journalists, um, it helps. Never obviously lie to them. Um, work together, thank them, message them afterwards and say, hey, thanks, that was a really great story. Build relationships with journalists. That's what the professional PR people do. Um, I'm trying to rush through now because we're going to run out of time. So follow up your story, put it out on Facebook as fast as you can. Fresh stories get better coverage than if you leave it for a couple of days. Ask your friends to share. More comments, the better. Tag the journalist or the news outlet. If you have a newsletter, put it in your newsletter. You know, get that story out there. And oh, there we go. Quarter of an hour left for questions. Is there anything that hasn't been covered that you'd like to know? Uh, first question, 
uh, from me uh, anyway. Uh, will all of this material, is all this material available online um, for us to access? I've taken some notes. Uh, Serena can send you a copy of the, um, the uh, presentation. Of all the screenshots. Thanks, that's great, yeah. Anyone else? Some, some of you in Metamost at all? I'll post just, it in the media channel the, in Metamost anyway. I've just noticed um, um, that there are quite a few extension rebellion, extra quite extra um, pages on Facebook, but then they're not part of, or they're like inactive and they're not part of the current active local groups on the um, XR website. So what, like in terms of communications, like what is the plan for that? <laughs> yeah, there probably are some defunct Facebook pages. We've had a lot of, as I said, we've had a lot of people burn out um, and a lot of people come and go and they have don't have more than one admin on their page. Um, yeah, that's something that probably really should sort out. So like I just Googled like Extinction XR, like Caulfield, and there is one, but then I'm like, there wasn't one on the on there wasn't one on the XR actual XR XR web page. So I was like, that's weird. Um, I was wondering, like, you know, is there any sort of plan to like get these restarted or you know, get access off someone else and like, hey, you know, because the point is it's not um just like building the movement in 2019 is that moving to 2020 we've got to keep going and if we don't sustain um, our numbers we won't reach that 3.5 and i think it's so important that we have to revive because these pages have at least some sort of following and it's be it's better to build from there than starting from scratch again absolutely Maybe clarissa i could catch up with you and because it's a de we're a decentralized movement so that means you know, there's no kind of one main organism that's sort of going to fix everything. And um, so, but yeah, it'd be good to talk about all of this a bit more if you want to. And I've put my email in the chat so we can follow up on some of these. Yeah, I'm dropping email. But I, I totally get it. <laughs> that might be an article that might go in the Victoria newsletter, Serena. Like, okay. is your local group, have they got a Facebook page? Are they on the web? Do you know we have a web page? Maybe something like that and, and you know who to talk to to fix it if they don't know. Yeah. I think Jay's got a question. I'm also an answer to that question. Um, so a couple of the mass mobilization working groups have been trying recently to reach out to groups and get this kind of thing sorted. So it's, a, it's an effort that's being made. Yeah. It's a good thing to be doing while everyone's locked down anyway, get some of that stuff sorted out. The idea. And Jane, um, was there enough stuff about interviews for you in that talk, or do you want to? Did you have any more questions about doing interviews? Or oh no, um, I guess uh, I'd like to thank you for going through all those useful points and that kind of detail. Thought it was okay. really handy. Mm. It basically just takes a bit of practice too, and if you mess it up the first time, don't worry about it, um, and just be yourself. Just be um, be polite, but just um, don't worry about um you know and as i say you're pausing and taking your breath every now and again so they will edit they'll get the best bit and tanya and margaret it. you've joined us so did you want to kind of jump in with any comments oh. or questions no i didn't um i don't have any questions that was a great presentation thanks for uh, thanks for all that information. It's really good. Where are you based? Um, Darawal country, which is uh, Cronulla in Sydney. So we're um, just looking at um, starting a local group here. There's um, very active inner Sydney, inner West group. Um, Great. Yeah, but not not so much happening in South Sydney at the moment. But it'd be good to try and try and change that. Um, like uh, someone else was saying, you know, towards Lifting, lifting the numbers generally. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this talk again next week. Is there anything you think was like too long or too short or boring or not useful or? So can I just ask a couple of questions? Because mm. I'm sorry, I was late. 
Um, I'm from Adelaide and I, I've come just because we're looking at running our own um, media training, uh, really focused around press releases and interviews. So I came to check it out and see how useful it was to refer to use this to refer people to. So I have a question is that you're going to post the recording on a Mattermost channel, which Mattermost channel? Are you talking about the national media channel or? I'll probably put it on national media channel. Is that, is that good for you? That's good for me. I can access it there. But it's just if you put it on a Victorian one, I'm not on that. Sure. And can I, um, can everyone excuse me if I ask a completely non-extinction rebellion question? Um, Miriam, I understand you're in Ballarat. And while you've been presenting, there's been a very regular bird call in the background, very loud, a sort of a, a, a peep peep tone. Does anyone know what that bird is? The Rosellas. Is that Rosellas? Because yeah. we, I'm hearing it for the first time this spring in my garden and I haven't been able to match it to anything. Is, it, is that one that they go peep, 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 like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's Rosellas. That's, that's the sound. I've got a bird feeder up the back there with seeds in it. And that's the sound they make. It says, hey, the seeds, come over, come over, the seeds, come, come. Okay, when there's so no seeds, when they go up there and it's empty, they go peep, 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 peep. Okay, so this when is the really seeds, loud peep, 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 peep. Okay, that's their excited tone, is it? Yeah, that means seeds, come and get the seeds. Okay, thank you. It's been driving me nuts because, I, because, <laughs> I mean, with climate change, we're getting lots of interesting birds in the garden that have never been seen before and trying to identify them. Thank yeah, you. So, Margaret, it's possible we could convince Miriam to do this a number of times. I don't know sure. if that's true. And so it mind. might be that you don't have to repeat this too. Um, anyway, just to plant that seed so we don't have to keep reinventing our wheels. Um, Showing you the yeah. garden. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah, very I'm happy to nice. do, um, like I could just do one on social media or I just do one on, on how to write a press release. So I could do you know different ones if people yeah. feel like they need to know a little bit more because it's a pretty quick skate overview of everything in this talk. Yeah, and we've, we've got very... Um, We've got a lot of demarcation. So we've got people that do social media and we've got people that do the media releases and spokes. And that's actually been a bit of an issue. So we're really trying to build that up and strengthen it at the moment. Um, but I, I mean, I, made a, I haven't taken much notice of the social media, but I've been sitting here sending questions on sig Signal saying, how do we do this? How do we do that? Because <laughs> uh, some of it I'm not sure about. That's great. Yeah. Um, I have a question regarding the live streaming, because I know that I've done a live stream before on um, Facebook, and it's just been like, wow, this has just been going on for like hours and hours. And like, is there really any action going like there's no drama or anything? When mm. is like the right time to sort of like, start it and end it in terms of like, not, not starting it when there's just something about to happen or like when's like the right time to begin and to when to end? It's 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 um, it's good to start when there's something interesting to film. Like don't start too long before the action starts. The first couple of like few seconds of your video are pretty important. You don't want to have a lot of the back of people's heads milling around. You want to either grab someone and say, "Here, come here. I'm going to start the live video. Can you, you know, will you tell people what's going on?" So you just either grab someone and get them, interview them. Um, we had, we did one in Kuyong. We had all Josh Frydenberg's office. We had people dressed up in dinosaur costumes and jazz, you know. And uh, we got all the dinosaurs already lined up on the steps. And then we started the live stream. So the first thing people saw was like, what? What's this? You know? It depends on your action. If your action is going to be really long, like if it's going to be three hours long, don't try to get the entire thing. No one's going to watch three hours. They're really not. Um, it's okay to get the start of the action. Make sure there's something interesting going on. If it's a, someone giving a speech or some dinosaurs or some props or anything. And then you can say, okay, well, I'm going to sign off now and uh, I'll be back in an hour's time or I'll let you know if something happens because otherwise it, 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 you can get like, there's a lot of standing around. When people are standing around and there's not much going on, that's a great time to interview people. I find the banner holders are often very good interview subjects because they can't run away. 
<laughs> well, you come up to them with your camera and the banner holders, the unsung heroes of any activist movement, the poor things standing there for hours holding this banner. And uh, they're quite often happy to have a chat. Uh, so banner holders are good to interview um, or any other passerbys, it kind of interviews. If you find that you're getting a bit bored with it, sign off and say, well, I'm going to sign off now and we'll come back later and give you an update. But if your action only goes for half an hour, just get the whole thing. It's terrible when people are jumping in and out and jumping in and out. It's, it's, ugh, just, just film the whole thing. Um, but yeah, you have to sometimes make your own amusement by yeah, going up and chatting to the banner holders or something. Does that, does that help? Yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, and don't be afraid to get people like to say, I'm going to yeah. start the video. I want you, can you talk, can you know, can stand over here, hold that sign. So your yeah. opening image is interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, those dinosaur costumes, they're great. Get those dinosaur costumes. So you can get them on eBay. They're only about 60 bucks or something, aren't they, Liz? The dinosaur costumes, they've been everywhere. They make great props. We're, we're using uh, Ned Kelly's helmet in Beechworth, uh, a little thing called, <coughs> oh, my dogs have started, Ned Says. Uh, so you check it out on um, Facebook too, Ned Says. Yeah. S-E-Z. -E yeah. Props are terrific, anything like that, any kind of props like that, especially if you can hook, put a hook yeah. around it, like dinosaurs obviously is like fossil fuels, so, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Warner Bulls got the, the business as usual dinosaur, and they've got a, it's got a little suitcase, a little briefcase that he carries around, stuff, you know. All right, seems like uh, questions have just about dried up, that's good. So, yeah, we'd love a little bit of feedback. So if anyone wants just to flick off a quick email about what was great, what they, you know, what could have been different or what else you might have wanted, that's really helpful. And this is happening again next week at the same time. So, yeah, send all your other XR rebel friends along because it would be good to have lots of people from across the country getting more into thinking about our messaging and our strategies. Um, I was a little bit late to this. So this um, has just covered like the promotional aspect of social media and not um, anything about the logistics of setting up an account, like in terms of um, say, say I didn't want my Facebook account the, the, for the Cronulla Darawal group to be um, to me, logistics around that. That's You didn't cover that in the beginning before I started. No, I didn't do that technical stuff. It's pretty easy and in fact you can just look up the facebook help but I, starting a new page is quite easy um, i do talk briefly like it's good to have a couple of different people being the admins not just one person um have a couple of helpers i talked about a bit of that that sort of stuff but not just the sort of flat out straight technical aspects of it but i can happy to explain some of that if you need help with it yeah i like i um i know how to set up a facebook page and things like that it's um more um, like if people were wanting to anonymize it or like not have it connected to them personally, I, I had been thinking about that and I, um, it was just my question whether that was being covered, but, um, that's okay. If, if that's not part, I understand no, uh, more about the PR question. aspect rather than the, like the technical, um, okay. thanks. Yeah. There has to be someone connected to it somewhere in the background there, like someone, a real person, you have to have an email address and all that. Yeah. It doesn't stop you from creating a phony identity no it does not that's correct but um yeah if you're worried about you can just set it up using your pro a proton mail address that doesn't have your name in it so i think and so that that makes you protect you know fairly anonymous and it's have you got a proton mail address have you yeah, no, I'll be I'll be able to do that. I just yeah, I just wondered if it was something um, that like is shared knowledge. Like I I'm confident that I'll be able to figure out how to do that. I just wondered if it was um, something that is shared. Mm. I think Viola yeah. might have something to say about this. Is that correct? Yeah, somebody else set up the XR Oakley Facebook page, but when I post as an admin, I post as that page, not as myself. Yeah. So it's obviously possible to do that um yeah 
Yeah. All right. Are we, are we, you reckon we're sort of done? Yep. So just a quick check out. Oh, Jay, you got one thing to say? Yeah, just quickly. Was this promoted on the XR Australia Facebook page? Okay, cool. Just checking. Yes, it, hopefully it was. Um, it certainly, we intended it to be. <laughs> Can't always promise, but. Yeah, no, I, I gave it a bit of a plug. Oh, good on you. Great. On there. I've, I've still got um, access to that page. I've been doing a bit more of it lately because a couple of people have dropped out. So I've been doing a little bit more Facebooking lately. Cool. All right. So let's have a, should we just have a quick check out? Uh, do you want me to dob somebody in? Wendy, just how are you? How was it? You're on mute. While you're working it out, Jay, do you want to check out? Um, I think I've already given my opinion on how it went, which was yeah. pretty great. And I'll just say I'll be dropping it into um, any of the group chats. I'm in to get them to this. I'll go to Hannah. Yeah, I found it absolutely fascinating. Lots of really useful information. Thank you so much. And you could pass it to someone? Uh, Carissa. Um, I'm a little impatient to start like taking action. So I've already sent Serena an email. I'm just like, I, I am multitasking because I'm like, okay, what's the next thing to do? What's the next thing to do? What's like, like the term act now is like probably like, I wanted to act yesterday, that kind of thing. <laughs> So that's just what's been driving me to do a lot, a lot of things. Um, yeah, and I hope that we'll be able to meet again and 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 see and support each other, uh, even though we're all across Australia. Uh, I'm passing passing it to Tanya. Um, yeah, uh, really great and useful overview. Um, just yeah, like covering all the details, making me feel like. Um, quite confident to be able to um, create and share effective posts. Um, definitely I'll share this in the little group that we're setting up um, and I'll pass it to Rosaria. Thanks Tanya. Yeah, feeling really energised by this um, training. Um, it's particularly useful to me because I'm one of the um, people in charge of our uh, Facebook in our local group and um, also preparing some actions and so I'm really uh, keen to use some of the knowledge that I've um, picked up here for um, getting things out there so thank you. And pass it to... So sorry, um, Janice. Thanks Rosario. Um, that was really great it certainly set a cracking pace um and i like the way you you set it up with some very some just some rules about not too many questions and questions in chats avoids you know, it just avoids that situation where people start dominating with their own agendas um and it's nice to know i can get access to this in more detail if i need it i'm sure someone can help me with that so yeah thanks thanks miriam nice to meet you too I'll pass on to Hannah. I already had a go, but I'll pass it on well, to I'll you. pass on to Grace. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was super, super helpful. It's making me like second guess all of the things I've posted or done on um, our social medias before. So <laughs> it was really helpful. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having my doing another live stream or doing another interview, getting back on the streets and actually um, using our like social medias again. Um, I thought it was really helpful and you presented the information in a really good way. I liked how it wasn't um, um, very, very long, but um, yeah, I liked how you kept the questions to a minimum. And 
a little bit of engagement as well. Um, I will pass on to Liz. Uh, like the others, um, I thought it was great. I learned a lot and I was reminded of a number of things that I somewhere had come across, but <laughs> not put into practice. So yeah, fantastic, thank you. But I, that's typical of, if you don't know Miriam, that, that's, that's always really high quality. And Wendy, have you got volume audio yet? Ah, oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll pass on to Bob. Thanks, Liz. Uh, look, that was really helpful. Thanks very much. Um, I, I wish that I'd seen it a couple of weeks ago before we had our action. Uh, might have changed a few of the way, some of the ways that we did things. Uh, but certainly, look, and I'll make sure that at least one of our group also uh, checks in for next week's as well, because I think it's really useful and we should be able to build a bit of a team up here, I think, on this. Uh, Viola, have you had your say yet? Not yet, Bob, thanks. Um, I will, there you go. <laughs> Miriam, thank you. That was beautifully pitched for local groups who are beginning and... Um, you know, finding their way out around uh, getting the message out. I'll be um, letting the rest of the Oakley crew know that they can sign up next week. Um, and uh, maybe looking forward to additional pieces that you might do on specific, specific aspects. Um, thanks, Margaret. Thank you for this. I think it's been a really good um, overview. Uh, I think it would be, I'd be really liking anyone who's involved in our local media and messaging to probably review the whole, um, the whole package. Uh, I think probably there's more in the social media side of it than around press releases. However, I was very interested in the embargo uh, info and the secret, secret squirrel business because sort of having there's a bit of a debate here that there's an inclination that when an, an action is um, secret that we don't actually even tell the media so it's very difficult to get coverage when you're trying to get somebody on the spot as something is happening um, so we've just actually started using our first embargoed um, press releases but it's still been a bit uh, there's been a bit of reluctance from the organisation to provide the level of detail that we really need to provide the media in order to get the, get the good coverage. Mm. You can um, be a little bit sneaky and just say, um, you know, the location, this, this is what we're doing. Um, uh, email us for more details about the location or something like that so that you only give out the information to people who actually really need it. So there are ways around it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard when you can't even find out the details of the action to actually write the press release. And that's sort of where we're at at the moment with some, some highly, highly secretive um, approaches. But we're okay. working on it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a challenge. Some people are so secretive about their things that they do. But there's no point in doing it if nobody knows you've done it. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, yeah. There's no, if you're doing an action, unless it's a little local action at the local shopping centre, based on engagement, it needs a press release. If it's the least bit newsworthy, otherwise you're just yeah. being annoyed. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have as many people as you do in interstate. So if we do actions, generally they are considered actions on a you know, reasonably topical and relevant and newsworthy. Hmm. So yeah, thank you for this. And I don't know who else. I don't know who else hasn't spoken. So, can you have you gone yet? Maybe. Yeah, I think Tanya had a go. Thanks. Yeah. All good. All right. Okay, I think we're done. Um, lovely to meet you all. And um, yeah, let the message out about next week. And seems like we'd be able to. Miriam's up for doing 
um, specialized areas. So maybe, you know, on special, focusing on social media, I think Rosario suggested something specifically for spokespeople. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk and Rosario, I'll have a chat to you more about that idea, but yeah, we'll, we'll think about how we might sort of push this along because yeah, let's go for it. Cool. Never, <laughs> never show everyone. one of those, one of those lives up this way ever again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. See you later. Have a lovely afternoon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was brilliant. <laughs> now I'm ah uh, uh, cool. See you, Janice. Lovely to see you. You're on mute still, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs>